What's going on everybody? It's your boy J Main back checking in with the people. And yeah, another day, another Jim Ryan quote people are going crazy about on the internet. I mean, every time this man opens his mouth, it's a goddamn headline that people are going crazy about. Now, don't get me wrong, his comments on backwards compatibility, even though I don't care for backwards compatibility, I know people do, so if Sony was to bring it, I would welcome it. I don't care for it, but I understand that it is kind of important moving forward. Even though his comments on backwards compatibility were ludicrous, even though his comments on crossplay, which I believe is more of a, um, a company-wide answer versus the uh, backwards compatibility answer was kind of personal. So even though his comments on that, like the crossplay stuff is a whole nother thing. I think it has a lot to do with the business side more than anything. And the, the comments that they talked about about protecting the kids, like that was all bullshit. Wait, I'm not going to argue anybody against those comments that he made on those two things. But this here today, I'm arguing for this because I just think this is another case of people reading headlines and overreacting. Now, if you didn't know, you might be hearing that Jim Ryan says indies aren't important or Sony don't care about indies anymore, even though they depended on them early in the generation. All these narratives might be running around about, you know, Sony and PlayStation stance on indies and how they don't care for them. But that's all coming from this interview that I feel like people fail to read. Um, Jim Ryan did an interview with the GameIndustry.biz. I'll have the link down in the description. And they asked a, a pretty good question. It was kind of a question that I was asking myself as E3 ended, especially for Sony. The question was, and one of the things you didn't really show were indie games. You didn't really show any last year either. Now clearly indie games are coming to PS4 all the time. So why aren't you showing them anymore? Great question. Last year, um, you know, Sony's conference was less talking, more games. This year, they kind of followed that same format. Um, and yeah, it was less indies. It was more of the AAA titles, the third-party AAA games. And it had a few indies, but it was a lot of the VR content and things like that. It was kind of, a, you know, a, a tightly knit conference and it didn't have a lot of time for indies, especially the way they were doing them early in the generation where they would have the developers come out on stage, explain to you their journey, explain to you their game, and then actually show you their game. It wasn't a bunch of that stuff. Now, Jim Ryan's answer was, it's pretty long, so bear with me. One of the things we have realized is that these video collages of 10 indie games shown in a minute is almost meaningless. Nobody can really learn anything about the games in that sort of time. It is almost viewed as wasted time. I'm gonna stop right there. Very important. These conferences like to throw sizzle reels together where they're showing off indie games. Now, back to what I said. Earlier in the generation, they were having developers come out on stage, talk about their game, and then show their game. Nowadays, Sony has more AAA titles that they actually have to show themselves to uh, promote to the people. They have more third-party deals where they have to show these third-party AAA games. So it's not a lot of time, especially with the way they want to do their conferences where it's less talking, more games. It's not a lot of time to have these developers come out on stage at E3, which is very important, and describe their games, take up maybe 20 minutes um, where they're talking about their journey, describing their games, displaying their games. That kind of stuff, I feel like Sony has, you know, moved to their PSX conference, which is a more PlayStation fan-centered event where people can expect indie games, uh, third-party games, some of the double-A titles, some of the smaller uh, Japanese titles, uh, JRPGs and stuff like that. Things like that are more reserved for PSX where they have more time, where they feel like that show can be spread out longer, where people come on stage, like I said earlier, explain their game. At E3, they wanna get to the blockbusters, the things that make people go, wow, this is off the chain. This is why I need to go out and get a PS4, majority of people. Um, some people actually go out and get PS4s for indies, um, if you didn't know, and these are the truth. Um, so moving on to the rest of his answer, Jim Ryan says, there was a time and place in the early stages of the life of PS4 to make statements. It was more about making the statement that we are serious about the indies 
and that we're doing this and that with the indies no man's sky and so on and so forth which broke out to be more than that and carved its own niche you know right now we have tons of indie content on the platform and the fact that we've elected with so many other things such as gran turismo and playlink not to give its own spot on stage this week in no way means it's not important or that it's not there or we don't worry about it it was just good to talk about it in 2013 2014 it is less relevant now we have vr to talk about now for example a lot to unpack there first off when he says the early stages of ps4's life that's very important a lot of people don't remember but when it came to last generation 360 was that the forefront in indie games they had the xbox live arcade they had all the indie developers on board um bringing their games over there ps3 was lagging very behind when it came to the indie game so what do you mean by early stages is they wanted to show that as the indie movement grows they're on board with the indie developers they want to make it as easy as possible for them to bring their games over they want to give them that platform to talk about their games that platform to show people that indies aren't just these small throwaway titles these are titles that are good that you should be looking to play as well as triple a titles now since like and I, don't get me wrong now i feel like sony doesn't really care to also show those indies because they have stated their case on their support for indies but also they have more triple a games to show early in generation they didn't have any triple a games first party wise to showcase on e3 stages so they really had to work up their portfolio in the meantime they wanted to show those indie games um now that doesn't mean it's not as important to them but they just want to make sure that they have enough time to showcase their AAA games. Um, he talked about No Man's Sky. We saw that game for a few years on the big stage. And even though that was that game went left as it released, that's an example of them showing their dedication to the indie developer. Um, they talked about Gran Turismo on Playlink. Gran Turismo wasn't even on the main stage. It was a game that doesn't really appeal to the e3 crowd that's more of like a gamescom thing because the people over in europe really love their gran turismo um and then he talked about vr content again back to what i was talking about with the indies this is something vr is something that sony has invested millions of dollars into hardware wise so why wouldn't they carve out time on stage to show vr software to show people that they are here to support vr and that if you do invest in a headset, you have content there to display. So when you take that into account of them having to show their VR content, um, their AAA games, their third party games, and they want to do a more streamlined conference, a sizzle reel is about all you have time for. And like he said earlier, it makes no sense at this point. You're not doing those indie games justice. You're better off dropping a five minute video on YouTube um, a trailer of, of gameplay of the indie game then you are showing it in the sizzle reel at e3 at this point so i don't know that's just how i felt and how i interpreted the comments i think people took it the wrong way but again jim ryan has said some crazy stuff over the past few weeks so he he at this point he probably should just go away don't even talk no more this dude gotta shut up um protect yourself go away nobody wants to hear from you anymore because it's always something your words are going to be twisted regardless of what you're saying whether it's right or wrong but that's my thoughts on this let me know down in the comment section what you guys think if you like the video hit that thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel while you're here that button subscribe button and i'll catch y'all in my next video peace